Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, ha I hope you have enjoyed lunch and you're fit for the next session. I'm sure it will be a very interesting one as we have a very important topic to talk about, which is the link between tourism and poverty and aviation. My name is Petra Schwager. I come from UNIDO. And UNIDO actually stands for United Nations Industrial Development Organization. Within this, I work in the environment management branch. And here we have a very close cooperation with UNEP within our joint resource efficient and cleaner production program. UNIDO is more industry related and for green industry, but we are getting more and more requests also in the tourism area. So I'm also the focal point for these uh, activities within our organization and member of the steering committee. I will not talk more about myself. I'm sorry I have taken already too much. Um, the next session, we're going to talk about how we can promote uh, pro-poor growth that is critical in achieving a sustainable trajectory out of poverty and meeting the Millennium Development Goals, especially the target of halving the proportion of people living on less than one dollar a day. Development opportunities through tourism are on the rise in least developed countries and represent an important factor for the overall national growth. In spite of in spite of its proven contribution to global economic growth and development, the sector of tourism still lacks political and economic recognition and support. With this, I give the floor to our first speaker, who is Mr. Luigi Cabrini. He is the director of the sustainable development and of the tourism program, which contributes to one of the strategic goals of the World Tourism Organization with spe special focus on the Millennium Development Goals. May I ask, may I give you the floor, Luigi? Please, to each speaker, we have 15 minutes. Well, good afternoon to all. Again, the first speaker after lunch, the most difficult task, especially after a rich and tasty lunch for which I also personally would like to, to thank our Korean host that is really doing their utmost to, uh, to um, give their better hospitality to all of us here. Um, well, my presentations will address more extensively the issue of uh, poverty alleviations, and at the end I will make some reference to the issue of tourism and development. There are linkages between the two, but there are also some difference that I would like to point out. Uh, one of the uh, uh, results of the uh, tourist development of the last two decades, uh, let's say, is uh, uh, not only a sustained growth globally, but uh, a difference in the rate of growth when comparing developing countries, high-income countries, and especially LDCs. So you will see in these slides that if you look at the world average it's about 258 percent. These are data of 2008, but they're very similar the percentage to today's date. Uh, and uh, you see that uh, in the same uh, period, uh, the 50 uh, least developed countries have um, uh, witnesses a growth of the tourist rates of 800 percent. So uh, the uh, percentage also of the total of tourism in developing countries represents over one third. Tourism represents a principal exports in uh, uh, at least one third of the developing countries and is the first uh, source of uh, foreign exchange in most of them with the exception of oil. Now, based on these assumptions and uh, uh, starting in 2002, I think that in the road of uh, Rio plus 20, 92 to 2012, I believe that for tourism, the Johannesburg Summit of 2002 was an important milestone. Uh, I think it was uh, probably the first time where there was uh, an official recognition of tourism as a tool for development in the plan of action, the plan of implementation, which was approved at the, by the Johannesburg Conference. And I think it was also the starting point of a number of initiatives, including uh, these uh, step projects. Uh, what is the step? Sustainable uh, tourism, eliminating poverty or alleviating poverty. So the focus of this project, I will later on, will show you how many we have and where. It's uh, yes, uh, increasing uh, the local economic impact uh, that derives from tourism 
in selected destination chosen mostly within developing countries, but could also be um, poor areas uh, within, um, I would say, not LDC, but countries which are in the uh, categorization of developing countries. Focus on providing a business and financial services to micro, small, medium, and community-based tourism enterprises. Uh, they normally would include uh, training of local guides, hotel employees, of workers of connected sectors, for example, some of the STEP project includes, uh, for example, um, improvement of food quality with participations of women for communities in order that that food produced at the local level can substitute um, purchase of foods from uh, high-end uh, hotels or uh, uh, resorts. Um, facilitating involvement of local people in tourism development around natural and cultural heritage sites and also try to support a, a business model that uh, favors um, poor producers and tourism enterprises. So, we, since we started, uh, as it was launched in 2002, the first project started developing in 2004. Uh, there are about 100 projects approved, of which uh, um, uh, more than uh, 60, uh, almost 70, has been already completed. Uh, the total portfolio of this project amounts to approximately 10 million USD. And I would like to mention here the um, importance of Korea. Korea, as established, in fact, was the, uh, one of the launching countries by uh, um, establishing what we, was called the STEP Foundation, which was the first initiative uh, whereby funds were raised uh, from the public and the private to start funding the first STEP project. The STEP Foundation is still working. Other donors joined, France, Italy, and others. But I think the STEP Foundation, based in Seoul, uh, was the first uh, that really gave an impulse to, to this project. Uh, as you see, uh, there is a variation of regions. Uh, and as you recognize, uh, mostly developing and least developed countries. Uh, Accompanying this process of implementing STEP, we try to uh, get uh, uh, some lessons learned from the implementation of the project and try to condensate these into uh, either guidelines or publication of best practices. So you see here a number of them that were uh, published along the year starting in 2002. Uh, I would like especially to mention the last one, the one which is bigger in the screen which is a, a, a manual and designed as such as a manual for training, which uh, UNWTO prepare jointly with SNV, the uh, Dutch uh, developing agency, and which is built with also uh, specific tools for delivery of training courses um, at the level of the community. Uh, this is also now uh, being translated into French, and uh, the French translation will be available uh, uh, very soon. Uh, the other more recent experience, uh, I said this is more a, a pro-poor approach uh, for tourists, mostly community-based, but we believe that one of the other big challenges that we have is to ensure that uh, tourism is taken into account in uh, uh, developing strategies uh, at the level of the country, at the regional level. And uh, uh, this is not really happen as we would like to be today. And often in the a country regional program and uh, um, um, in the portfolio funding uh, from uh, donors, uh, both multilateral and bilateral, tourism uh, is, is not normally a priority. So we try to build uh, a mechanism uh, uh, whereby, uh, I don't know, with the objective, and which is, I will then mention, which are the partner of this mechanism, that uh, supports uh, developing countries in, in, in implementing tourism for development, uh, mobilize necessary financial resources, and in that I think there is a linkage with the work of the GPST, and try to mainstream tourism in the global uh, development agenda. We have, for example, started recently a project with the uh, European Commission, the European Union, uh, in order to provide guidance to the um, uh, European Union delegations uh, in the field, or now tourists can again contribute 
as a development sector and provide elements for including tourism into a territorial and, and development plans. So the steering committee, which is mostly a UN-based uh, approach, um, as you can see, uh, includes uh, uh, many of the agencies which are already uh, partners of the GPST, and uh, um, uh, you know includes uh, beside UNWTO, ITC, UNDP, UNEP, ILO, UNESCO, UNIDO, UNCTAD, and the World Trade Organization. And uh, as you can see, as areas of intervention, which is uh, uh, building governance and sustainability in tourism, promoting investments in the tourism economy, uh, fostering poverty reductions, and encouraging human resources development. Uh, this is a, a relatively uh, recent initiative. I think it complements uh, uh, global initiatives like the GPST, and on another level, another global initiative was mentioned this morning, which is the Global uh, Sustainable Tourist Council. I think uh, each one looks at the slightly different aspects, and this one is uh, mostly uh, United Nations oriented with the purpose I mentioned. Now, I was asked then to um, um, uh, mention what we see as being uh, the major challenges and the recommendations that we would like uh, to do. So as far as the uh, uh, challenges uh, that we see and based on the experience of, of the STEP project implemented so far, we are still uh, not satisfied with the high level and the high percentage of leakages uh, that we see in the tourism economies in developing countries. We believe that more needs to be done in order to increase the share of income and profits that remains within the local economy. We see now leakages occurring uh, in all supply chain at the level of the services, at the level of the products. So this is certainly uh, something that will need to be improved. Uh, as a second challenge, we see uh, that there is a need of more recognitions uh, by government and by donors of the contribution of tourists to poverty alleviation. I th we see there is still a limited replication of uh, uh, STEP or other similar project for poverty alleviation. I fully share what was said, I think, that by the representative of GIZ this morning, a need to go from the small to the big picture. Uh, this uh, pilot project are very important, but they should serve uh, as a pilot, and then there must be, uh, I think, a further commitment, from, especially from governments, to replicate them and to apply them at the national strategies. And uh, finally, a third challenge, again, based on our experience, is the uh, uh, need to strengthen more the capacity building at all levels, uh, the government, the public institutions, enterprises, uh, local skills, etc., etc. Now, linked uh, somehow with these challenges, we uh, uh, would like to offer uh, some recommendations. One, that uh, there is a need of a better measurement and evaluations of the tourism that on poverty alleviation. Uh, I often get the question in, in meetings when I uh, show the slides that indicate the percentage of growth in developing countries, but how much of this percentage actually remains, uh, uh, not only with the country, but within the poor segment of the populations. And I think this is, there is not yet, I think, uh, um, uh, a full satisfactory answer to the question. Uh, there are some studies but uh, I think that needs to be improved uh, and evaluations of the impact uh, of uh, uh, tourism for poverty alleviation. Uh, we also uh, see, again, as link of one of the challenges, uh, a better and, and, and stronger disseminations and promotion of existing best practices. Uh, we have the STEP project, but there are many other initiatives. Uh, we do believe that despite of well, our efforts with the publication we have seen, there is not enough uh, uh, taking stock and taking advantage of those in order to replicate them and to um, um, get to um, applications of what has, has worked so far. And uh, uh, finally, we, we see also need of probably a better and a stronger involvement on the private sector on the specific uh, uh, poverty alleviation uh, projects, at least this is a bit uh, the experience that we had uh, in our um, uh, STEP initiatives. So I will then uh, conclude here with, uh, with my presentations and of course ready to answer any questions or, or comments. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Luigi, for this um, very precise presentation outlining some of the results achieved by STEP, but also by other initiatives. Um, may we come to the next speech and, uh, speaker now to Dr. Harold Godwin. Uh, Harold is Professor at Respons of Responsible Tourism Management and Director of the International Center for Responsible Tourism at Leeds Metropolitan University. And he's going to speak to us about our sustainable tourism projects addressing poverty. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. And it's a, it's a great pleasure for me to be here in Korea. It's the first time I've been. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge the contribution that was made by the Korean government when they set up the STEP Foundation. Um, something which I think was a, an important step for a national government to take in getting this area of work underway. The answer to that question is very simple, I guess. Um, are sustainable tourism projects addressing poverty? Yes, they are. The problem is how well they're doing it. That there are projects and initiatives and experiments going on attempting to address poverty is obviously the case. I think the fundamental question for us, particularly within the Global Sustainable Tourism Partnership is what evidence have we got that they work and therefore what evidence do we have to deploy which would suggest to other people that these initiatives are worth replicating. And that's for me where the problem is. But let's talk first about the opportunity because like Luigi, I don't doubt that there is a really big opportunity. One of the differences, if you're living in a rural village or in a slum area of London, between tourism and a shoe factory, is that the end consumer has to come to the factory, to the destination, to experience the tourism. And that means that there are opportunities to take more money off the tourist than they perhaps intended to spend. All the tourists arrive with some spending money in their pockets. And we know from research that we've done in the Gambia, for example, that the Gambia is very successful in taking all the spending money off about 30% of the tourists who go to the Gambia. That's the good news. The bad news is that on average, people leave the Gambia with 30 pounds in their pockets, which they'd hope to spend on holiday. So you can read the figures either way. The Gambia is very successful in getting tourists to spend extra money but there's still scope to get them to spend even more money. And one of the key questions, I think, for tourism and poverty alleviation is how successful we can be in engineering ways in which the economically poor in any society are able to extract money from the tourists to get them to spend money on goods and services and to make a living for themselves. We know, for example, that there are now some initiatives in London which are very successful with the, with the homeless and the previously homeless, getting money from tourists for guided trips around London. And we we're very pleased to identify that and to award it in the last Responsible Tourism Awards. Tourism and poverty alleviation is not only about what happens in the developing world, it's also what happens in many developed countries which still have large pockets of poverty within them. So what are the opportunities? Fundamentally, I think there are four. There's the sale of goods and services to tourism businesses, the supply chain. In many ways, that may be the easiest area to work in. And there's some spectacularly successful projects now, both in craft and in um, fruit and vegetables, particularly being sold into hotels. And we have, I think, lots of good examples of that being done, some of which have been written up. There's no doubt in my mind that we can demonstrate that that works. Sales of goods and services to tourists, a little more difficult, but we've had a lot of success with that, working with the bigger operators out of the UK, and I know of examples where it's done by lots of small and larger hotels around the world and by tour operators making that happen. Again, I think we have the evidence that that can be made to happen. Creation of employment for the economically poor, much more difficult, and yet that is what most of us want. Most of the people in this room have employment. It's employment that most people seek. Most people don't want to be self-employed entrepreneurs. They're looking for jobs. And unfortunately, it's often cheaper for hotels or resorts developing in areas where there are people living in poverty adjacent to them to import the labor from elsewhere rather than to 
increase the skills of the local population to take those jobs.